Wild plants in there. It's just too wild. Yeah. No, it's okay. Great. But my name is Russell Friedman. I'm a state of work here. Put me present now at Fasco Maritime uh, here in Massachusetts. I live over in the Berkshires, not too far away. PDA is a national political action committee, and we meet the second Monday of the month as ever bought by the Zoom now. Um, please join us. You can sign up over the table with suits and the markup and get on our mailing list, and we'll talk about national issues. And at, at this point, it's all about the election, but after the election, hopefully the cut things to celebrate, the other things to talk about to move the progressive growth and forward. Uh, so no one's going to state the importance of this election. Never in my lifetime has we as a nation been facing the real uh, of hometown fascism. This is real, we all know it. Two nights ago, I heard Cheney Rassi call Trump and Tyre, and he was being polite. Thanks. The question that we progress is want to get done on single payer, how to find Roe v. Wade, John Lewis, bona fide ads, and much more. And none of this is possible without a Democratic victory in less than a month. Because not only do we have to hold the White House, but we must take back the House and make our Congress we share the rules to me one more time. But we must hold the Senate as well, and then we must keep pushing and the filibuster expand the Supreme Court as she has a public Supreme Court. And none of this is possible unless Democrats are in up and down the path. So we need to get to work. EPA's phone banking is the seven states right now. Join us. We think we'll go to New Hampshire, New York, campus, hall, write postcards at the table of the beer, or whether actually you'll sign this. There's any information how you get involved with them. Taking a look at this group, I'm sure everybody already is probably way involved to bring up doing Perry's being that she and I think that's what we used to have. But so, um, so we're going to I think that that was he's out of goes of the He's out of the youth. Let's go on to the and say a few words. Since I'm catching you walking up the ears at the time. Sure. It's bad. Yeah. It's okay. <laughs> but it's okay. Yes, sir. Yes, please. Well, I was going to call you on the left plate now, so. Deep plate. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, no, but I, I am so delighted to be here because I'm probably not what we have to look down right there this team page. So I, I mean, we did this as long as this. I should tell you one of my favorite things about him is that he does events like this, and not just on an election year, but on a state late. And if you follow him on social media and don't read the comments, he has an ivory bear at his district. You see him in coffee shops, at dance hall stairs, and in maybe the the centers, having conversations with constituents, which is just so kind of late and crazy. We don't do anything that is not for to and elected officials. And to the bodies like spirit of service. And I'm just very grateful to be here just kind of this evening and to, to hear all the wonderful things that are going on in Washington that I'm sure he's going to tonight. But I said thank you all for coming out and uh, I will now sit down. Thank you. 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 Say a few words. She has for it. It's a little bit. Wait, because we said that she's very angry. Uh, scared me, so she did. She did uh, make it. Well, I wanted to tell this crowd of West New York and North Hampton that our chairman government represent us in Congress. He is our voice, named our friend. Jim is going to say a few words, and then we'll have a question and answer. So, what's uh, your view? And then say, good morning. So, um, first of all, let me let me thank Russell. Let me thank Susan, um, and um, let me thank everybody with PDA. I've I was I, I'm, I've been around long enough when this organization was founded. With remember Tim Carpenter going way back when. 
Uh, and then we miss Kelly Johnson. Um, I mean, some great people have been associated uh, with this organization. And I always welcome the opportunity to come to PDA events because we share the same values. We have a commitment to the same issues. Um, and I think it's important to have organizations that are active and vibrant uh, and that are committed to getting stuff done. So I thank all of you for coming here today. If you want to learn more about PDA, make sure you stop at the table. Um, and, um, and I would urge you to do that. Um, I am so, I want to thank the mayor who showed up and then had to leave, the great Lindsay Sabadoza. I'm always, I, it's, it's a great pleasure to serve with good people um, in government, uh, and she's one of the best. So I appreciate her words and her being here. And I'm just so happy to be here at the Northampton Arts Center, which is incredible, it's beautiful. Um, and not in Washington right now. Um, I've never seen such dysfunction in my life. You know, people ask me, how do you, how do you sleep at night? I say, I sleep like a baby. I get up every two hours screaming. Um, I know a little bit about dysfunction because I got elected when Newt Gingrich was Speaker of the House. Um, and uh, I'm nostalgic for Newt Gingrich. That's how bad things are right now. Because when I look back then, I mean, over his objections, we actually managed to get some stuff done. And one of the problems with the current Republican-controlled House is that it's impossible to get anything done. Uh, and, um, you know, uh, and it's not because we're not trying to find common ground, but it's because a small group of MAGA extremists are calling all the shots. You know, one of the things that Kevin McCarthy did uh, in order to become speaker, if you remember it took him 15 rounds to become speaker, he gave away all of the speaker's power. And he said, I will even give to you, uh, to the MAGA groups, you know, any one of you at any time can call for a vote to vacate the speaker's chair as often as you want. Figuring that he had the majority, they would never do that, and so it was more symbolic. Well, they did it. Um, and we went to him and said, hey, look, you know, you're blocking everything. And you need to reel in your extremists. And if you do, we'll give you a vote. He said, I don't need you. And he lost the speakership. So then comes Mike Johnson. And Marjorie Taylor Greene got up and at one point asked to vacate the chair. And so, you know, we were like, this is getting tiring, right? We need to, we need to get stuff done. So Democrats, myself included, said, okay, we'll give you, we'll keep, we'll, we will vote not to expel you. We'll keep you in. Um, uh, because otherwise we would never get a speaker. And we did, but it, the expectation was like, okay, thank you for saving me. Um, now let's get to work about figuring out things that we have in common and let's get them over the finish line. And much to our disappointment, he chose the Kevin McCarthy way to appeal to the most extreme elements in the Republican conference. And so there's an old saying, you know, fool me once, you know, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. They'll, they'll never be, uh, an effort. I mean, if they try to oust him in the next, you know, month or so, uh, there'll be no uh, help from Democrats to keep him in. I mean, we want Congress to function. And even when there's a Republican majority, it is important to get stuff done like not shutting the government down, um, like making sure that we meet an emergency session and provide the necessary funding to deal with these terrible hurricanes and these natural disasters. And um, here's a little bit of ray of hope. Marjorie Taylor Greene actually, you know, who's for a long time said that, you know, there's no such thing as climate change and, uh, and, and climate change is not affected by anything that human beings do. She actually did a tweet the other day, uh, uh, yesterday I think it was, saying that um, we know what's happening. Um, loyalists to Biden are manufacturing these hurricanes to hit Republican states to knock out Trump voters. <laughs> so maybe she's beginning to see that there's a human connection to all of this. I don't, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just trying to put a good spin on it. Uh, but in any event, we are meeting here today in this incredible facility um, because I think we all appreciate that this election coming up in a matter of weeks 
is the most consequential election of our lifetime. And I'm not exaggerating. And we've been through some crazy elections in our lifetime, but this is the most consequential. Um, it is not just about the issues. It is about the Constitution, and it is about our democracy. I was a history major in college, and um, what I see unfolding uh, in this country from Donald Trump reminds me of Germany uh, in the late 20s and early 30s. I mean, and if people think I'm hyping things up, go back and read your history. I mean, this is serious stuff. Uh, the, the attacks on immigrants, the constant lying, um, the pitting one group against another group against another group. Um, it's exhausting to watch all this unfold. It's traumatizing. And I think part of what he's trying to do is to get, you know, a lot of us to be like, I, I can't stand anymore. I'm going to pull the shade and just retreat. Um, and we just can't let him do that. Uh, and so this is, you know, one thing that you need to know is that Donald Trump learned from his first term. He learned that I need to make sure that the vice president that I have um, is not just a conservative, but somebody who is willing to uh, ignore the Constitution if I tell him to. Um, he's going to make sure he appoints a Secretary of Defense who will um, obey his order if he says to the U.S. Secretary of Defense, I want the U.S. military to be deployed against U.S. citizens. He will appoint an Attorney General, and it's hard to believe you could have an Attorney General worse than Barr, but anyway, he will appoint an Attorney General that will have no allegiance to the rule of law or to the Constitution. Um, and even worse than that, he will fill his cabinet up again, like he did the first time, with the biggest number of lobbyists that has ever served in any administration. I mean, he already won that distinction in the, in the first time he was president. He would just build on that uh, the second time around. And look, um, I mean, one of the things that I really appreciate about Kamala Harris um, is that one is I think she's a good person. Two, I think on so many of the issues that we care deeply about, from a women's right to choose, to climate change, to investing in our economy, to a sensible approach to a military budget, to, I mean, I go right down the list. She's with us. Is she with us on everything? No. No, I mean, you know, I mean, I, I, you know, if we're looking for the perfect on every issue that we care about, you know, we'll be looking for a long time. Uh, and, um, but the bottom line is, she will be a, not only a good president, I believe she will be a great president. I've gotten to know her, and I, I gotta tell you, she's the real deal. Well, yeah. And every time that we have, I, we, I have asked her to help, whether it is something that impacts my constituents, or to get engaged in an issue, she has done that. Tim Walls, I served with him uh, for many years in Congress. He's the real deal. I mean, he is a Midwestern Minnesota. What you see is what you get. I mean, I, 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 uh, but I understand one thing about him. He, he, uh, he, he cares about things like agriculture, and we do out in this part of the state as well. He uh, cares about the environment. Um, he cares about issues like hunger um, and food insecurity. I should tell you that Minnesota beat Massachusetts in implementing a universal school feeding program for every single child in Minnesota schools. That's where his heart and soul is. I know him, he is good. My wife knows his wife, Gwen. My kids know his kids. We were at the Democratic Convention. My daughter was with me, and I, was, I couldn't find her. I, I, was, I was panicked, like, where the, where the heck did she go? I finally got her on the phone. She said, I'm in Tim Walz's box. I said, well, how come you're in Tim Walz's box and I'm not? She, says, she said, there's no more room here. So, but we can, we can work with these people. We can work with these people, um, and uh, and if we can, and we are so close, so close to winning the house back. And if we win the house back, Hakeem Jeffries will be speaker. Catherine Clark of Massachusetts will be majority leader. I will be back as chairman of the rules committee, um, and everything is possible. Uh, you know, every, 
And, you know, and, and, and look, we've got to struggle to hope, hopefully hold on to the Senate, um, which is tough, but it's doable. It's doable. Uh, and so, you know, I'm just, uh, by way of opening, I'm just here to say, you know, to everybody, do whatever you can um, in these next uh, few weeks. Uh, you know, you don't have to get on a plane and show up in Michigan, although if you want to do that, you should. Um, but sometimes it's just calling your relative, your brother or sister who lives in another state, or, you know, doing phone banking from your house, or sending an extra $10 to a frontline candidate. Uh, who's, you know, on the verge of a victory in the House or the Senate will make a, a big difference. Look, progressive Democrats of America believe things, as you see in the sign, like health care is a human right. We need to make that a reality. We will not make it a reality if we don't win these elections. I mean, I, that's just a fact. Uh, and we not, no, we not only need to go and vote, we need to be excited about going to vote. We need to be passionate about going to vote because we may not have a second chance. Amen. You know, again, as a history major, I can recite for you countries that were democracies, that lost the democracy. Some have come back, some haven't. The one thing I came to appreciate, um, you know, at the end of the Trump term was how really fragile our democracy is that the checks and balances are only effective if we have decent people in place. Okay. I'll close with this, and then we can open this up. I, I think we'd rather have a conversation here. But as some of you know, I was the last person on the House floor on January 6th. Speaker Pelosi, you know, was called away, and she was annoyed. She asked me, will you take over for me? Um, and she even left her phone, um, you know, uh, at the dais. And uh, she never came back. And I had, none of us had any idea what was going on. I mean, she was whisked away because we're in the chamber, you know, certifying the election results, and there's no TVs, and we're not supposed to be on our phones. And I'm in the speaker's chair, and my phone is vibrating, and I'm looking at it, trying not to be seen on camera, and it's my daughter saying, you know, why are you there? I had no idea what she was talking about. And then she said, you should leave now. And I remember typing back question mark, question mark, and then stop bothering me because I don't want to be look like I'm not paying attention. And she said, you should leave. I had no idea. And it wasn't until I was asked by Capitol Police to stop the proceedings because it was no longer safe for us to be there that I began to realize what was happening. And when I walked off the floor and I walked into the speaker's lobby, which is separated by two sets of doors that are glass from the midway up, when I looked to the, on the Democratic side, there were hundreds and hundreds of people pro, not protesting, swearing and banging their fists on the glass, cracking the glass. And they ultimately broke the glass and began to start pushing people through uh, the, the door. And the Capitol Police you know, asked them to stop and they wouldn't. And, the, and a person was shot and killed and then they dispersed. And we all managed to to get to a safe location. I, I, the, what happened that day, I, I can't ever get out of my head. And it's not just the threat to the members of Congress and the staff. Capitol Police were beaten. Some of them lost their life that day. And here's the thing. We have the former president who started all of that basically saying, you know, nothing really happened that day. Which brings me to my very, very last point. There is such a thing as objective truth. Um, and we have to defend it. When I went home to Worcester a few days after that, uh, January 6th, I was in a supermarket and a guy in a business suit, maybe in his 60s, I mean, he looked like a lawyer or a banker, I don't know. Um, he said, oh, the other day, oh. And I thought he was being empathetic and saying, you know, I'm sorry that that happened. I said, thank you very much. He says, yeah, we almost got fooled. I said, what are you talking about? He said, a friend of mine basically sent me the truth. I said, well, what, what are you talking about? He sent me a link. I said, a link to what? He says, it showed what the deep state fed the mainstream news media, which is the violence and chaos. And then the link showed what really happened. I said, well, what really happened? He said, it was peaceful. I said, but I was there. He goes, you gotta look at the link. 
<laughs> I said, but I was there. You didn't know. And I said, I could get, we could get on an airplane right now and we could fly to Washington. I'll walk you through the Capitol. I could show you the broken glass, you know, the you know, things that were you know, torn apart and ripped apart and, and we could do it right now. Um, he said, well, I'll investigate. There is so much misinformation and so many lies and untruths out there that it is impossible for one candidate to correct the record all the time, even on what's happening with these hurricanes. We have a obligation to help lift up our voices and correct the record. Some of us have social media accounts. I mean, some of us participate you know, in group chats. Some of us are members of various organizations where we, people gather on a regular basis. We, 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 have to, we have to use our influence to set the record straight. Um, and I'll tell you, um, if we can win these elections, um, I am really hopeful for the future. I'm really hopeful for our democracy. I'm really hopeful we can get some good stuff done. Um, we can create a more peaceful world. We can create a more just society here in the United States. We can be a beacon for human rights around the world. You know, we can reel in corporate excess. We can fix our tax structure. We can do a lot of good things. Um, but we have to win. So, um, you know, work with PDA, plug into these campaigns, um, and, um, and with that, I think it's probably better if we just open this up and talk about whatever's on anybody's mind. Does that make sense? Okay. Just raise your hand and I'll point to you and I'll make sure that everybody gets, that, gets called on. Uh, thank you. Okay. Okay. In the, in the back, yeah. Um, I'm concerned about Jennifer with the new mainstream media um, presents things on us like Derek, because we're in the world, that's how they get it. Just even last night, watching the public coach in front line, it almost was like uh, it was Vance and, and Watson and comparing their views. It, it almost looked like an ad for, for the Vance. Right. And, um, can I just write PBS? I mean, I, yeah. how would we? Write or email them because we, we don't want, they should not be sane washing lies, right? And that's what's going on right now. Yeah. Yeah, it, no, they, everybody is not equal, right? When it comes to, uh, you know, being presented on the news. If you are clearly lying and making things up and it is, you, it, it, you can fact check it, you know what, then you, they need to be called out. They, and just the time I, I didn't uh, clock it, but my thought was they were giving so much more time to fans, and then and they would talk about that stupid thing uh, at China when when Mao went to China. You know, it's like they don't even talk about the issues equally. It's yeah. like these stupid things they harp on Harris or Watts yeah. about and not, and yeah. then they don't call out all the lies and duplicity yeah. of because because. Vance can hang a pretty picture. <laughs> yeah, no, but he, he's also a very dangerous man in the sense that, I mean, he's the man going around telling everybody that immigrants are stealing your pets and eating them, right? And, you know, and we're all, we all know the truth, right? But you say it over and over and over and over and over again, the media repeats it over and over and over again, and people begin to believe it. I, I've been at events where people have basically said, why are we allowing immigrants to steal our pets and you know and eat our cats and dogs, and it's, I, I don't I would pull the hair out of my head if I had any left, right? I mean I just, I don't I don't it's a you know just you know, we we have to constantly correct the record um, because there's so much misinformation, so many lies out there. I can tell you that you know on the, with regard to the hurricanes and FEMA, I mean there are thousands and thousands and thousands of people deployed. Many of them risking their lives on search and rescue operations, getting aid to people who are being hit with the most devastating storms imaginable. They are doing everything we would expect our government to do if we were in a similar situation, right? And we have Trump and Vance basically saying people are doing nothing. And there's a concern that if people who are being impacted by these storms 
think that that's the truth, they won't call for help. They won't even, they won't think there's anybody there to help them. I mean, they are, they are deliberately trying to frustrate efforts to save people's lives. It is so cynical. Um, it is, it, I, 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 but we've never seen anything like this. You know, I'm old enough to remember, you know, how bad Richard Nixon was, right? God, I, boy, he's like a Eagle Scout compared to, <laughs> to Trump. Um, but, you know, one of the biggest, one of the threats to our democracy, you know, is the big lie that gets told over and over and over and over again. Um, and we just, we have to be more aggressive in pushing back. Yeah. 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 I'm confused about the filibuster and whether it should be abolished or not, because it seems like it could backfire and you know, there's you know, a lapis. What makes it one of your thoughts about that? Yeah, I, I go back and forth. I mean, I, I, I mean they, I, I'm upset that uh, they changed the rules on nominating judges to the Supreme Court, um, uh, because now it's easier for whoever's in like Republicans to be able to put whoever they want on, and they've put some people on who basically have you know, sent us back decades and decades and decades. Um, I mean, the, the, the thing is that, I mean, to, if there's an argument for the filibuster, um, it is basically to try to get greater consensus and to get stuff done that can pass overwhelmingly, um, or at least get consensus that these issues should be brought up and, um, you know, um, and we ought to consult back and forth. But it, we're, we're electing people in this country who have no interest in getting stuff done. I mean, I, I, I will tell you, that, that, that's a, you know, so, I, I mean, the, the people who elect senators who basically say, no, I will never ever, you know, uh, agree to work with you on anything and anything you bring up, I will filibuster, they're using it as a weapon, not as any way to seek sort of any kind of balance in the Senate. So if I were in the Senate, I'd get rid of it right now. Um, and take my chances, because right now it's hard to get any, anything done. Um, I, um, you know, in the House, again, um, we're, we're getting people elected who again, are, who, again, are not interested in getting anything done. Marjorie Taylor Greene doesn't feel she has to do anything for her district or pass any bills. She just wants Twitter followers or X followers um, because she needs a lot of attention. Maybe she didn't get enough love in her childhood. I don't know what it is, right? But the bottom line is, it's all about, I want to be the focus of attention. It's me, me, me. It's like the Trump syndrome. It's about him and not about you, right? And people like that are getting elected. And again, I, in my politics are progressive, but if I were conservative, I would want somebody who can get stuff done. You know, not someone who's just gonna point fingers. I don't, I don't understand why people vote for people who are not interested in improving the lives of anybody other than their own. And um, so I, I um, but it, it, it's, it's, it's gonna be a hard thing to do. Um, uh, but again, if we could hold on to the Senate, if we can win the House, and if Kamala wins, I will tell you that, that, that we will be able to get a lot done. Understand one thing, the infrastructure bill, that is responsible for like making my hour and 10 minute ride from Worcester to Amherst this morning, like almost a two hour ride because of all the construction, right? <laughs> but, but I mean, that was the biggest investment in infrastructure, you know, since the creation of the interstate highway system. In the, in the Inflation Reduction Act, the biggest investment in the world to combat the climate crisis. Um, I mean, so we're investing in, you know, in the chips bill, investing in, in, in domestic manufacturing. I mean, that all happened because we had the ability to get it through the House and Senate um, and, and get a president who would sign it. Um, and um, so, uh, so the, the possibilities are great if we can win. We all hear much about what is being done to prevent another January 6th. Is Congress is it, uh, taking precautions? Um, it's interesting that we now have a candidate from Democrat 
ticket, who's also the vice president, who will be in the uh, the seat right, yeah. to receive that. And what's being done about the state electors too? Right. And how do we avoid the mega um, eruption again that we? Sadly, saw on January 6th. Well, one thing is that the Justice Department is holding to account those who tried to rob us in the last election. And hopefully that's a signal um, to people who are thinking about trying to do it again. One. Number two, you know, if you go to the Capitol now, I mean, there's a lot of hardening of the Capitol grounds uh, going on. You see a lot more you know, reinforcement of the doors and other things, and there, there are there are regular meetings with the Capitol Police uh, talking about, you know, what to expect, um, you know, if that should happen again. But I'm concerned about that. I'm also concerned about violence on Election Day. Ooh. I mean, you know, I mean, I, I mean, some of the stuff that's being posted on social media, some of the things that are being said by members of Congress and members of the Senate and, and Trump, I mean, it, it has, has people worried. I'm told that uh, in some communities it's very hard to get poll workers and people to work on election day because they're afraid. I mean, really? I mean, people should, the idea that we, we've created a climate where people are afraid to be present to help facilitate, you know, a smooth election day? I mean, it, it's so awful that we're, we're, we're in this position. And I, I, I gotta tell you, I think the way the, the people say you can't put the genie back in the bottle, I, I disagree. I think if we can win and win big, or at least substantially, on election day, then the Republican Party is gonna have to reassess that if they wanna win elections, we have to go back to being old fashioned conservatives. You know, I mean, we can't go into, we can't embrace conspiracy theories. We can't justify or rationalize violence. Uh, you know, we, 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 we can't, um, you know, cater to a candidate that just lies pathologically. You know, I mean, I think they would have to go, we have to go back to, to Mitt Romney's and Bob Dole's and hey, and Barry Goldwater's, right? I mean, they, they have to get away from being nuts. Um, and that's what's happening right now. And here's the thing, I'll just say that the people that bother me the most on the Republican side, really are not the Marjorie Taylor Greens or the Lauren Boeberts or you know that crew. I mean, I, I, I don't, they, they're going to need some serious interventions uh, to deal with what is going on in their heads, right? The people that bother me the most are my Republican colleagues that come up to me and say to me quietly, "This is nuts. This is crazy. He's awful. You know, he's like a dictator." And then go to a press conference and say. He's the best president we've ever had in our country. I mean, I, I get it. You know, we all want to get reelected. You know, I remember when I, my, my first reelection campaign, I thought if I didn't win, Western civilization as I know it would come to an end, right? <laughs> I now realize, you know, life goes on. And the idea that you are given the privilege of serving in the United States Congress and you don't have the spine to stand up for the Constitution and our democracy is pathetic, is pathetic. I give Liz Cheney a whole bunch of credit. I mean, her and I served on the Rules Committee together. We didn't agree on what to have for lunch. But boy, <laughs> she's got guts. Uh, she's doing what's right. And her I never thought I would ever say something nice about Dick Cheney. I, 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 I thank you, Dick Cheney, for, for you know, for doing what, you know, when I first got elected, he was in the House, and if I was late for a vote, and you know, all of my names were up there, and the vote tallies, and I was like, oh God, what are we voting on? I, I, you know, I had two seconds left. Dick Cheney, yes, no, you know, so I, <laughs> but anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful, I'm grateful to him. I'm grateful to her. I, I want, I, where's Mitt Romney? I mean, he ought to come out, you know, and George W. Bush. I mean, I mean, I mean, Republicans, this is not about, you know, a tax policy. This is about saving our country. That is what is at stake here. Um, and so, you know, we've never been in a situation like this. We, we now are in one, and this is the time for people to stand up, because there's no do-overs if he wins. Go ahead. Yeah, I understand. Thank you for being here. Uh, one thing that I think might be helpful 
is for people like yourself and Cheney Raskin and PEA, uh, Bernie Sanders, the company Patagonians, and the rest of us to come up with our own project 2025. Obviously, what it would say would be a lot different than what the Heritage Foundation uh, came up with, but I think a list of things that we would want, you know, you know, like windmills, not warfare, sure. but no very specific things, I think would be good from a progressive point of view. Um, so I think that's something that I would encourage sure. your office to, to, to think about. Uh, also, you know, with the lack of rank choice going, you know, Michigan, Joel Stein, um, you know, that's scary. Um, and if we have any choice voting everywhere, that would be so much easier. Third parties are not a problem with them. And really, they should work with Democrats, not with, you know, off, you know with Trump, et cetera. And the only time the lack of any choice voting has ever benefited a Democrat is likely when Ross Perot put Bill Clinton in the White House. Mm -hmm. And then just lastly, um, between 2018 and 2021, 10 billion snow crabs died off the coast of Alaska because the ocean waters got too bare. Um, and then two years ago, in well, Europe, over 70,000 people died from the heat, from heat the day caused it. So, I mean, it's wonderful, the Inflation Reduction Act and everything we're doing, but we really do need to, you know, to have it be so much more serious. Yeah, well, I, I agree, we, we, we ought to have a, a clear agenda, and that's what, and if we win, every PDA has a clear agenda, you should pick it up, but if we, if we win, then part of what the first few months of our activism has to be is getting that agenda you know uh, bought into by the, the the leadership and by by the white house we don't have time to get everybody to buy in in the, in the next couple of weeks because that's all we have left but there, no there should be an agenda people should have there should be meat on the bones when it comes to what, what we stand for it's more than just getting a, a being elected because oh i'm a democrat or i'm a republican right it, it should be we're being elected on the issues i agree with you on ranked choice voting I agree with your ranked choice for and, and one of the, but one of the things that really bothers me, I saw a, um, a social media post um, from, a, again, I don't know Jill Stein, uh, but uh, a, a social media post from one of her uh, organizers out in Michigan saying, speaking to a group of people saying, our job is to make sure Kamala Harris does not get elected. And I, I found that chilling because, I mean, if you, if she, believes in the stuff that she says she believes in, and I mean, Jill Stein, I mean, we have a better chance of moving in that direction with Kamala Harris. We have no chance. We have no chance with Donald Trump. Um, and again, what we're seeing with, with some of the judges that he's appointed, we're, we're, we're losing rights in this country. I mean, my daughter now has fewer rights than her mother. I mean, like, boy, I never thought that would be the case. Um, and you see, every time we seem to have, have a victory on abortion rights, you've got a conservative judge that comes in and overturns it. I mean, people are dying in this country um, because of lack of access to the kind of care that they need or that, they, that they're entitled to. I mean, that, that, that's what's, I mean, we, we, we might get to the point of no return on some of this stuff. Um, and um, so, like, I, 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 again, I understand the frustration that many, not just in Michigan, but around the country, myself included, have with what's happening in the Middle East right now, right? Um, but putting Trump as president is somehow gonna do what? I mean, I, I don't know if you heard him being interviewed on Hugh Hewitt last night. His solution is to turn Gaza into Monaco. Um, you know, casinos and Trump Towers and what have you. Beautiful ocean, he's not visited there. He's never visited there, but anyway. Um, but that's the mindset of this, of this man. So, look, we, 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 even with disagreements that we have, we, I think we have, to, we have to come together and figure out, okay, let, let's, let, let's elect the people that we can have at least a fighting chance of moving them in a different direction as opposed to someone who we know will take us in the exact opposite direction. Hey, Jim, thank you for being here. Um, I have a question, you, you kind of touched on this earlier, but about how um, you know, some, some folks on the Republican side will you know, have more sensible takes behind closed doors, perhaps, but then one small bite on them, 
and like totally turn that on its head. Um, how much of that do you think uh, is genuine versus how much of that is performative? And you know, if, if it's largely performative, do you think that's because they just you know like, want to go viral, or like, what do you say is going viral? So I, I think I think there are. I mean, I, some of the Republicans that tell me that they disagree with Trump and they think he's dangerous, I think they. They deep down believe that. I mean, these are people I've worked with when we were in the majority, uh, even when they were in the majority before, and we've been able to find common ground. But they're afraid. And you know what? I, I, I get it. Liz Cheney spoke out. He went out and defeated her. There's a guy in Virginia, Representative Good. I mean, he's as right wing as you can be. I mean, there's no, he goes off a cliff. That's how right wing he is, right? And um, his sin was that he endorsed Ron DeSantis in the primary, and then when DeSantis dropped out, he went and endorsed Trump, but Trump never forgot that, and basically went out and found him a primary opponent and defeated him. So Trump is a vengeful man. So if you're a Republican and you take him on, to be fair, he's coming after you. And he has a track record of being pretty effective in trying to defeat you or make your life totally miserable. I hasn't won in all the places that he is targeted, but he does have a record of doing it. So when you take Trump on, it requires a little bit of a spine. Um, but but I, I think if you don't have a spine in the face of what Trump is standing for right now, I mean, literally, I mean, destroying this democracy, obliterating our Constitution, if, you, if, you, if this is not enough to develop a spine and say, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to do what's right, then I don't know what the hell it'll take. Um, and um, and I'll, I'll be honest with you, I don't, I don't know, I, I speak for myself, if I, if I were in Congress and, and voted against my conscience on a daily basis, boy, I, I don't th I'd, I'd be miserable. I wouldn't want to be there. There's other things to do in, the, in, in life. Uh, but you know, if, if, you, if you care about the people you represent, if you care about this country, I mean, I, it, it, this is the time that we should all be together. Hi, well, first, thank you. No. Um, you mentioned Mitt Romney a couple of times tonight, and he's been in the headlines today, um, most recently in the New York Times about an hour ago, for uh, the fact that he is not endorsing Kamala like Harris. I hope that's a yet. Um, he, in my mind, has always been a very influential yeah. and moderate Republican, and he says he's holding out because he wants to rebuild his party. I don't see endorsing Kamala Harris as, as opposed to later rebuilding the Republican Party. So my question for you and for your like-minded uh, sorry, Democratic colleagues, uh, is what can you do to help sway Mitt Romney to take the stand like others such as this chain? Yeah. So in, in our private encounters, I have hinted to former Governor Romney of Massachusetts that he needs to, we need him right now. Um, and if you want to be, rebuild the Republican Party, you're not going to rebuild it if Trump wins because then that will be the Republican Party. It'll be gone. I mean, you will have a fascist party, basically, that goes under the name Republican. Um, and, um, you know, I, um, so, I mean, like I said, if Trump wins, there are no do-overs here. I mean, there really aren't. I mean, we can say, oh, in four more years, we'll just fi fix everything. I, I guarantee, I, I, this, this man is vengeful, he is petty, he is vicious. It is about him all the time. He didn't care about anybody in this room or anybody other than him. And you know that's the way it's always been. And he will destroy this country. And, and, and here's the deal. He advertises it. So you know, you know, um, you know it was that great line by Maya Angelou, when somebody shows you who they are, believe them the first time. Right? Well, he's telling us. It's not secret. I mean, you know, it's not secret. Um, he is telling us. And so, again, I, um, I, I, don't, I won't, you know, I, I, I bet, maybe I could log another call to Governor Romney, but I, I don't know if he'll take it. But, uh, but the deal is, for, for people like him, for George W. Bush, again, people I, I have great disagreements with, for the sake of our country, right? 
you got to put politics aside. It's about saving our, our system, our, our respecting our constitution. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we, you got to get to. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I, I think there's a 50 50 chance of Trump winning. I, yeah. I really hope he does it. So I, I would just like to say, if he wins, we're going to have to wake up the next morning and keep fighting. Right. And I know you know that, but I'm a little alarmed by the Trump wins. It's all over. So that's. That's one thing. The second thing is I'd really like to thank you for the letter you sent to Secretary of State Blinken and President Biden this week asking them to enforce the Levy Law, which requires that the United States <laughs> of weapons to countries and military units that are violating international human rights and human rights law. And so I'd really like to thank you for that. I think this has been a long time coming. That it's too bad that you know so few of your colleagues signed on. I'd like to push you to go a little bit further because I think the Leahy Law has proven to be rather toothless when we have a State Department that consistently reached uses to actually investigate the human rights violations that are occurring. Matt Miller yesterday, I want to ask about reporters um, to comment on the fact that Israel is specifically clenching the north of Gaza, said, well, Israel should investigate that. That's obviously uh, ridiculous. And that's how the lady law is going to be enforced. If it even is enforced, it's insufficient. So I thank you for sending that letter, and I ask you to go further and, and actually stop sending military aid in total to a country that was committed to ethnic cleansing in Gaza and now starting a wide report letter on Iraq. Yeah, thank you. Uh, well, yeah, to the first point, yeah, absolutely. I mean, if the worst happens, we have to fight. I mean, there's no, there's no question about that. Um, but I, I'm going to tell you, we're going to be at a severe disadvantage. And so, you know, um, and we can lose a lot of rights if he prevails. So I, I just point that out. On the issue of I I Israel and Gaza and Lebanon and Iran, I mean, I, I'm heartsick over what's going on. I mean, and um, I think what happened on October 7th is atrocious. Um, I, 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 I you can't justify that or rationalize that. Um, and what's happened in the aftermath of that is atrocious. You can't, you, there's no way to rationalize or justify the, the death toll in Gaza, you know, the bombardments in, in Lebanon. Um, and we're now getting, we're risking getting sucked into a, a deeper war here that, you know, could spiral out of control in which we will be asked to be more directly involved. Um, and so, you know, I've been, I, I, I've, I've, you know I, I was one of the first people to call for a ceasefire shortly, not too long after October 7th. I've, I've talked to many people in this room and throughout my district on this stuff, and, you know, and not everybody was happy with that. Um, people are divided on this issue. It is a complicated issue in many respects, and sometimes we don't appreciate that. Um, I, I was one of two people in this delegation to vote, to vote not to send additional weapons to Netanyahu. And, um, you know, I am on a bill to try to fund UNRWA because we need humanitarian aid to get to people in Gaza who are starving and who are dying of all kinds of preventable diseases. Um, and um, I did, we did the letter on the Leahy Law because that's already law. We don't have to pass a new law. We have a law. It's on the books. We also have another law on the books that says if you are frustrating the delivery of humanitarian aid to people, then you don't get military aid either. So we have laws on the books that we need to enforce. Um, and, um, but, you know, one of the questions that I pose to people some, is like, okay, so you had two people in the mass delegation that voted to, not to send any more weapons to Netanyahu at this time, myself and Ayanna Presley. If that vote were held today again, would we have more than two people? Um, and I, I think we gotta figure out a, maybe some different tactics in how we persuade more members of Congress to kind of get with the team here in terms of demanding some accountability from Netanyahu, but also doing more to stop the violence. I mean, we, we, we have to be, protect, civilians have to be our number one priority in terms of, of, of where our focus is right now. And this, these, these illegal reprisals going back on all sides has to stop, has to stop. We have to demand that it stops. 
Um, and Biden, I wish we're tougher with Netanyahu. I, I know he had a conversation with him today. I didn't see the readout of the conversation yet. But let me just say one, other, one thing that I, I've, I've found, because I've, I've spoken to various audiences. Some are in agreement with my position. Some are not in agreement with my position. And the, the thing that I, I wish we could figure out is how we get all sides to understand the humanitarian and the other side, the, the hu humanity and the other side. I mean, I, I have, I have, um, I received emails from people, you know, who support Netanyahu, who have characterized Palestinians as subhuman, as they don't matter. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm shocked when I get those kinds of um, uh, emails and, and letters, uh, because surely we, sh we can all agree that if a child is killed, that the parents will, will grieve the loss of that child, whether they're Israeli, Palestinian, American, French, German, whatever, right? But when you start to dehumanize people, then you, can, you, then you rationalize the, the violence. I have had letters and emails from people who say they are supporting the Palestinians who talk about Israeli citizens in the same way. You know, I, 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 you know people criticize me when I criticized Iran for lobbing 800 missiles at Israel. Granted, through the Iron Dome, with the help of Jordan and the US, most of them didn't get through. The only person that got killed was a Palestinian in the West Bank as a result of, of that. But there's trauma there. Um, and if any of them get through, I mean, the idea that somehow it's okay that an Israeli child dies, or it, it, this is kind of, we're playing that numbers game, we, ju we have to get beyond that, because I don't think we can persuade one another that we need to get to peace if we don't recognize the other's humanity. And I, I, don't, I don't, I just, what I feel, what I've sensed, and I, I, and I don't even know what the answer is, but I do know this, the violence has to stop. We, we gotta start treating people as human beings. Um, and, um, and we also then have to get about the business of what is a long-term solution. Um, and, I, and, and resolving the Palestinian question has to be front and center. Netanyahu cynically gave Qatar the okay to fund Hamas um, and to give them a leg up in uh, in Gaza. He did it for a reason, because he knew that the world community would say, oh, Hamas is so awful that there's no way people would be asking for an independent Palestinian state. Um, but he ended up getting a, a, a group that launched this terrible attack on October 7th. Um, so I, okay, I mean, we are funding Netanyahu. So that's why we have some leverage right now. Uh, and I believe that we need to hold, we, we need to hold true to our laws, um, and um, we need to enforce our laws, especially with our allies, right? I mean, especially with our allies. And, you know, somebody accused me today of not being a, a being a, an enemy of Israel. And I said, I'm, I, I consider, I've always considered myself a friend of Israel. I was in Israel a year ago uh, before the attack on October 7th. I, I was actually in the areas that were attacked. Um, and um, ironically, the people who were targeted are the most committed to peace in all of Israel, happened to be the, where, they, the, where, they, where they focused. I said, but, but I consider myself a friend. And if you're my friend, and you're doing something that I think is self-destructive and wrong and bad, and I don't call you on it, then I'm not a friend. You know, I'm just, a, I'm just an apologist. I'm just going along just because I don't want to make any waves. And I'm telling you, uh, Netanyahu is doing more damage to Israel than anyone could have thought would, would be possible. And the final, final thing I'm going to say is the one thing he has in common with Donald Trump is Donald Trump is running for president to stay out of jail. Netanyahu is desperate to stay in power so he doesn't have to go to jail on corruption. Um, and it makes him doubly dangerous. But I hear you, and I am, I, I, I am 
pushing the Biden administration every which way I can to get them to enforce our laws um, and to send a clear message that we're not sending any more military aid that's being used to kill civilians. Okay. Okay. Ah. So, I, I don't need to tell these. Okay, all right. Somebody pause it something. <laughs> well, you can't hear us. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Maybe a puppet instead of a puppeteer. I would look at what's going on in this country around the world. You can throw anti Semitism into it. As a Jew, it's always right there at the, at the doorstep. But it seems to me there's some really big money behind the so called Republican. And that Donald Trump is their puppet um, doing their bidding, but not necessarily leading. Uh, he may not be Adolf Hitler, he may just be a clown. Or he may be Adolf Hitler, isn't it? I, I, I'm interested in your opinion. Yeah, well, I, I, I think he is a clown, but that's, um, but I, yeah, I think he is a clown, but, um, but look, I, 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 don't, I don't know where he gets his ideas from. I know he surrounds himself with some pretty sc a scary cast of characters uh, that are, um, you know, uh, that actually advocate some, some pretty awful stuff. Money behind all of it. Right, there's big money. Behind, there is big money behind all of it because what he's promising people, um, especially those with big money, you'll be okay. I'll take care of you, you know, and uh, don't worry about it. You know, we're not going to hold big corporations accountable for polluting. You know, uh, we're going to have a tax structure that's going to give you more and more, you know, uh, money that you don't have to invest, reinvest in our country. I mean, we live in a country right now where we have teachers and firefighters and police officers and, you know, and, and union workers who pay a higher tax rate than some of the richest people in this country. And they want to keep it that way. They want to keep it that way. And so, you know, yeah, the big money, he, he's, he's telling the people with the big money, I'll give you whatever you want. And, you know, and in return, you give me what I need is the, is the money. Where some of these wacky ideas on, you know, on immigration come from and um, in, in America first and, and, and really resuscitating slogans that were, you know, came out of Germany in the 1930s. I, I don't know who feeds him that stuff. I don't, I don't know where that, where that comes from. But he, he's clearly onto something. And what, he, and what he thinks is this. He thinks is that I don't need to build my base. I don't need to win the popular vote because we have the Electoral College. So I just need to turn my base out. And it worked in 2016. Um, you know, and, and, I, and a part of my base won't even tell a pollster that I'm going to vote for because they don't, they're afraid, right? So they don't want to admit it. But they'll show up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to depress everybody else. I'm going to try to get you so that you pull the shade, you don't vote, you stay home, you know, you vote for a third party candidate or whatever, but you don't vote for her. This is a very, very sophisticated plan that they have in place, and um, they have it, and it's worked for them um, in the past. And the, you know, you notice he's really not trying to reach out to the, to the center. He's not doing warm and fuzzy interviews. You know, everything. She's a communist. Like who says that? Like in 2024. You know, I want someone to ask him. Can you define what communist means? I don't think he didn't know what the hell it means. I mean, all these, like, you know. And I'm going to say what I think, go back to the press. If you or I said one-tenth of what he said, what he says, if we characterize our political adversaries or anybody in the way that he has, we'd all be canceled. With rat. Or we'd be out of office, right? I mean, nobody would tolerate any of us saying anything close to what he says. And yet he... It's just him. And, and so I'm hoping that the press, you know, steps up to the moment. I mean, I don't want, I, 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 just fact check the candidate. Both, fact check both candidates. That's all. Let me make sure people know what the truth is. 
So I'm going to be the bearer of bad right. news Sorry. to cover things and answer three more questions. Okay. Um, before he does have a seven o'clock event um, as well. So Who has a question? Just raise your hand. Three nominee people. One, two. We have, we have we have four. We have four. So we over five, we have five. We so then after five we're done. Okay. All right. Uh, I have a question for closer to home. Yeah. Uh, there's a slew of ballot um, initiatives in the election coming up. I'm curious if you have anything you'd like to say to us about those ballot initiatives. I, I, I keep on right. So the the MCAS. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. Uh, yes, I'm two. I'm yes, I'm two. I I I, uh, I um, my two sisters are public school teachers, and they're they basically you know have taught me that uh, you know MCAS are okay, but they should not be used for criteria to graduate. That this, the anxiety among students and parents, the complexity of the population, um, you know, makes it a challenge. Um, and they feel that oftentimes they're not teaching lessons to the uh, students that, quite frankly, are more valuable than scoring well on a test. So I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm yes on two. What are the, what are the, I, and unionization of TNC drivers. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm for the giving the option of unionization for the uh, Uber drivers. Right, the Uber drivers. Four is psychedelics. Psychedelics. I don't know. I don't know. I haven't taken a position. Yeah, I, she, you know, she's telling me yes on psychedelics. Right? Uh, uh, we, we can talk. We can talk. And, and what am I? Uh, and then five is um, the, tips. the tips. Yeah, and I, I getting mixed. What are you getting? What are you hearing? In there? I mean, I'm getting like it's very mixed. It's mixed views on that. So I'm not sure how to vote on the tips. I'm still trying to figure that out because I'm getting different feedback from waiters and waitresses that I meet at restaurants and so it, it's, I don't know, it's not. It, one is the auditing of the legislature. One is the auditing of uh, the legislature. legislature, which I'm uh, we're okay with that, right? Okay. You're okay with that. Yeah, okay, all right. I have to check with my state <laughs> legislator on that one. Yeah, all right. Yeah. First, uh, I just want to thank you for all that you do for us in Washington, D.C. Well, thank you. Thank you. My question is, if we do win the House, the Senate, and the Presidency, do you think there's anything Congress can do about the John Roberts Court? Well, yeah, I mean, if we, if we maintain control of the Senate and there is a vacancy, I mean, we will be, a Democratic president will appoint, you know, uh, will, will nominate somebody. Um, I, 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 you know, I, I, the Senate has some power to be able to, you know, um, make some reforms. One of the things that I, I think I would like to think they would push, you know, is some sort of an ethics you know, law. I mean, I, I, I don't know. I mean, Lindsay is in the state legislature. There are things you can and cannot do. There are gifts you cannot take, right? And um, same with in the House. But uh, to be wined and dined on private yachts and to be, you know, flown on private jets and to be able to spend time in luxurious resorts and not have to report it, um, I, I, that just, that, I mean, by any measure, that doesn't smell right, right? And um, so there, there needs to be some accountability for the corruption that we see, especially with Clarence Thomas. Um, and um, look, I, and I, I think they ought to do a full-fledged investigation. Um, and, um, and, and if they see it appropriate, they ought to, move to, they ought to vote to remove him. Um, I mean, again. <laughs> I, just like, you know, you, you don't want me to be getting free gifts from big oil companies so that I'll vote for, you know, big oil interests. Um, you don't want, you know, big oil companies whining and dining Supreme Court justices and then having to decide on cases, you know, that um, could adversely impact oil companies, but they vote the other way because they want to be whined and dined some more. So I think there, there's some opportunity there. Yeah. Um, uh, given the given the state of the news these days, and uh, the fact that some way there are so many sources of information, um, I'm very disturbed that some people will only see Fox News, and I wonder, or 
other sources of meat which are leaving the world. And I know that you have to deal with this all the time. Yeah. How can we get our message through to people who must trust them? Yeah, it, it, is, um, it, is a, it is a challenge, right? And um, because, you know, um, I mean, when I first ran for office, I mean, you know, people all read the same newspapers. There were a limited amount of channels to get news from. The, the internet and the social media stuff didn't even exist, right? And so you, you, we all were getting the same set news and same facts and we could agree on objective facts. Now people don't read a lot of the newspapers. They don't get their news from the st stations that you or I might watch. Sometimes they don't watch any news stations. They're getting stuff on social media, stuff that is you know, online, um, and that's what they're basing their opinions on. I, 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 I think a lot about this. How do we, how do we change that reality? Um, you know, I think our you know, I, I, I think maybe one of the things we ought to be stressing in schools at an early age is how to get objective news, you know, how to be able to fact check, um, you know, how to know whether, you know, the source you're getting information from has a slant or whether, you know, it's objective. Um, because you can't undo what is, has happened here. And we also, gonna, at some point, are going to have to have a discussion about AI um, and the implications that that has. I mean, the, things are moving very, very fast. Faster than we're having conversations about them, faster than Congress is acting on anything. And, um, you know, but um, it, I, I, I wish I had a, like, all we have to do is this and it, we, we're taken care of. But we're so far along uh, that you know, we're going to have to maybe think in terms of helping to educate and train people into being able to be more discriminating in terms of what they take as fact. Uh, Jim, thanks. I want to echo the, the um, thanks to you for all you do for us in Congress and to say with Lindsay and the State House and Joe Goffer. I think we're so lucky in a sense, to have such a team of, of representatives representing us. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, there's almost nothing that I disagree with that you have said tonight or that you are doing in Congress. There is one thing, though. Okay. And that's why, <laughs> as friends, um, as you and Maxine have said, I, I just want to raise it. Okay. Uh, on the assumption that we, I mean, and I totally agree that we've had to first of all make sure that Trump doesn't get back either. That's, and in fact, I'm absolutely agree about that. But let's just say that he doesn't, that we have Kamala Harris our next president, that we have a, a Senate and a House Democrats controls. Um, my question is, what about Ukraine? Because, uh, you know, you've talked quite a bit about um, Gaza and the Middle East, and, and as you say, there's a difference of opinion as there is on Ukraine as well. But that war has been going on almost three years now. It's clearly not going to end without some kind of negotiation because uh, it's, it's just it's an endless war. It's it's, it's um, stuck in a in a what's the word you know long jam. So you know what. What can we expect, and what can we expect from you about how to make peace in that situation? Yeah. Well, first of all, let me just say, the days of big countries invading smaller countries has to end, and that goes for us too. Um, so, I mean, Russia shouldn't be invading Ukraine, we shouldn't be invading anybody, you know, nobody should be invading anybody. We ought to respect the sovereignty of the various countries that currently exist. Secondly, um, on Ukraine, Ukraine didn't ask for this war. Um, and um, I was part of, I was the first congressional delegation with Nancy Pelosi to actually visit uh, Kiev after Russia launched their invasion. And um, one of the things that stuck with me was the particular vicious way in which this war was being wa waged against the Ukrainians. And, um, and we have to find a way to end it. And it will end one of two ways. If Trump wins, Russia, we, we stop all aid and Russia takes over. 
He's made it very, very clear, right? So that's, I hope it doesn't happen, but that's, you know, and I, and I worry with that scenario, uh, because after I visited Ukraine, I visited Poland, and they're worried that they're on the, on, on the, uh, next on the list. The other way is, you know, Putin realizes that um, his friend didn't win, and that, you know, the policy in all likelihood is not gonna change, um, and so it creates a situation where there is a negotiation. And I think, you know, this will have to be figured out, and I think that, you know, I, 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 want, I, want, I want violence and killing to stop, you know? Um, but I also, you know, I, I also, having talked to countless Ukrainians, you know, um, understand, you know, that they do not want to be occupied by another country. Mm -hmm. Period, right? And so, yeah, we, so I'm, I'm, I'm for figuring out a way to, to, to bring this to an end. Um, and I think we, again, have an opportunity to actually talk about a, a negotiated um, settlement that is, that is acceptable to the Ukrainians um, if Kamala wins. If Trump wins, I think it will be that we, we walk away. And I think that would be a, a tragedy, uh, to be honest with you. And um, um, so, um, look, I, I just say one other thing. Um, one of the things that I'm really worried about, even beyond Ukraine, is the loose talk about using nuclear weapons. Um, Putin's using that talk a lot. Um, I worry about the fact that we withdrew from the Iran nuclear deal and now Iran is developing a nuclear weapon. And if Israel you know, decides to target Iran's nuclear capability, that will just force Iran to double down on getting a nuclear weapon because that's the only way they can protect themselves. I worry about people in Congress who talk about a military confrontation with China. Um, we don't want a military confrontation with China. And by the way, China is as bullheaded as we are in many respects, and that is no one will ever want to lose. And then you worry, does that take you to a point where we begin to use tactical nuclear weapons? So, you know, you, know, you, you could think about a, a million different scenarios here, uh, but, um, but, I, but I do think there's an opportunity to figure out a way to bring this war in Ukraine to an end. Um, with Kamala Harris, and um, and again, I, I think I think she I think she understands that. It's I think Putin yet again thinks that there may be a way that he can win, and I think that's one of the things that's complicating any any uh, uh, kind of settlement to this right now. Do we get everybody? All right. Thank you. Uh, I want to thank everybody for coming. Um, and especially thank Hans and Metropoli for being so accessible to the best number of and after this and a split couple of So the first thing, of course, let's make sure when we turn into Congress, and I think they got in. Elect Democrats in Boston, not on to, to the White House, to members, everybody can do something like, oh, it's the facts, and this is not. It's Stadia White Lab. Great John Melby. John, yeah, Craig, Craig. I always go back to the statement by John Will. They always, they also serve from the Stadia way. Everybody can do something. I mean, if everybody does everything we can to help them do it happen, uh, as everybody not being thanks to it. If anyone needs any help with anything official, um, Kobe Gardner Levine is my point person in my Northampton office. Um, and so call him and Josh, do you uh, lose him? Uh, he left. I mean, he's, a, uh, obviously he's my campaign person. But I just, and, you, and, and with this, there's a, there's a, um, my, my, old, my old friend, George McGovern, um, used to say to me, remember one thing, we, we may not be able to change the past, but we can help to shape the future. And that's what this is all about. It's about shaping the future. Um, and we all need to be a part of it. And, uh, and if we all do what I know we can do, we'll have a lot to celebrate. So anyway, thank you very much.
Ich habe mich jetzt gerne.